All right, chat, say hi to YouTube, okay? Hi, YouTube. Okay, guys, guys, hello, hello. So, the director just finished, the new director, did a live stream. And, um, oh, I want to make this really fast. I will try to wrap, but um, I do have to give some context of what's going on in Lost Ark Korea. Well, globally, okay? Well, right now, it is Mokoko's birthday, guys. It is Mokoko's birthday. I don't, I know you, don't, you guys don't care, but I think that... Some of the Makoko rewards, like there's, there are new emotes and uh, skins. I think they'll be handed out globally, hopefully soon. Father Aegis about that. But anyways, let me give you some context. Why did he even go live other than because it's Makoko's birthday? Because there's drama, as well as the roadmap ended in Korea. There's a lot of drama right now, a lot of rage. You know, online keyboard warriors. There's the, the NA, EU, the Western DPS locks circulating. Uh, if you go to the class forums, a lot of people are complaining, they're crying, they're laying down. Paladins, everyone's feeling bad for Paladins right now. If you're wondering why, head over to Twitch.tv, okay? You could ask me chat. We'll talk about that later, but um, Strikers are sad right now. Um, and, you know, just a bunch of classes, AT Scouters, there's drama about that. Someone's witch hunting a streamer about it in Korea. And blah, 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 blah. Balance. Balance is an issue, as well as... Bunch of things that he's going to address today, okay? Alright. First of all, this stream is mostly about the mind of the new director. Don't expect like, new class, June something. Or, low on at uh, July something. Or, you know, don't expect dates. Don't, don't expect dates. Just think of what, just, can you relate to this guy? Are you thinking along the line as he is? Or... Is he like just way out there, right? In Andromeda, is he clueless about the game? That's what this stream is mostly about. So let's go. Let's talk about facts or let's talk about what he said. He talked about Behemoth, the direction and the plan. What the heck is a Behemoth? For those that only hang out on YouTube, you got a job. You never hang out on Twitch, that's fine. Behemoth is a new 16 man raid. Content wise, um, epic raid, it's a it's an epic raid, not a legion raid, end game raid, different from other end game raids. Uh, so he goes into detail about how, you know, they do like have hard content like hell modes, trial modes, recently like hell haramatan. Um, and while behemoth is pretty high entrance in terms of eye level, in terms of spec, difficulty wise, not too tough for the user base. So people, do, um, a lot more people can approach it instead of being scared to approach it, like hell mode and trial is what he said. He thinks it went well, according to his plan, according to his expectations. Uh, they incorporated the battle reses, and people like the battle reses, as well as um, working together, because it is a grand scale epic raid. So you work in teams to break the boss's wings and body parts, and that new breaking feature that they implemented, he thinks it went well, and uh, he is still aware of the gate zero issue. What is gate zero? It's a boss. It's called making a group. So he's aware that he says he pugs himself. Um, I don't know if I believe that. But he said there are, he, he's aware of the support issues. He needs to look at the data to see if the support issue is due to the raid being a 60 man or not. Is it caused by the high level requirement being too high? Or is it the DPS to support ratio is off? However, but highest participation of all... Like, from all the recent endgame raids they have released, highest participation rate. Higher than Voldis. Because chat's like, is it higher than Voldis? And he's like, yeah, 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 higher than Voldis. For example, he says support 95, 95% of the supporters above 1640 have participated. Mm. I wonder why you only mention support. Is that saying go make support, guys? Highest from all endgame raids, the amount of players hitting 1640 has increased by 15% in the first week. Right, so yeah, that's not, you know that's that's like Lost Ark, one of the Lost Ark's business model. Introduce a raid and then give you some FOMO. People are like the, the word of mouth. Oh my god, it's so fun! Hey Johnny, you coming or are you gonna stay at sixteen thirty eight? You coming with us or not? You're like oh Johnny's like oh shoot, I guess I'll hold. You know that's how they make money, right? Like so they're kind of boasting that you know the players were incentivized. You know, this happens in the West. When Voldis came out in the West, as well as Daemon coming out for y'all in the West, you're like, oh, shoot, do I go normal or hard? Hmm, let me swipe and buy this package. Anyways, right? It, it, it did good, okay? All right. 
But it didn't, it's, it's not like it didn't have any problems. There are problems. He's talking about the pros and the cons. YouTube chatters were asking, will there be another, another 60 man raid after this? And he says, no, he, you know, kind of he kind of laughs, shy laugh. He's like, no plans to keep releasing 60 man as of now. So it's not going to come after this, but because the main raid format he said is eight man, but maybe later. Keck W, I'm shy. He wants to talk about something that he already talked about. He made a post about this last month. Um, the dailies and weeklies, Pirodo, which means like the amount of time we need to designate to do raids, not just dailies. I think they have nerfed dailies pretty well. It could be nerfed even more, like the Una tasks, uh, with B Frost, as well as like Chaos Dungeons going twice as fast now, and one guardian a day. Sure, it can nerf this even more, but I, f I feel like the bulk of the, the time consumption is on the weeklies and mostly gate zero, which is gatekeeping, as well as you know, um, waiting for support and blah 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 blah. The weekly, right. So he knows this is a problem. Once again, it's about what he's thinking, right? He knew that about this. So Ekina was designed with two gates. Even so, in-game dailies, weeklies are too time-consuming in his opinion, right? He feels Ekina on release. Difficulty was a little too high, hence the nerf. Uh, I put a little bit of my opinion here. I don't think they should release raids hard and tune it a little bit better. Right. It's never going to be perfect on release, but I think it, they should release it a little bit easier because if, if it's a little bit too difficult, then people start gatekeeping. Uh, the Like the Thaemon is the core definition of the highest gatekeeping in Lost Ark in Korea, right? Because harder the content, the more thoroughly people will look, right? I, I remember on stream, I was showing my viewers a Thaemon group, a pug. I looked at the name. There were five requirements. You need to have this title, this title, this, this, transcend this, this. I'm like, damn, man, what is this? It's like harder to get into a freaking. It's like a lawyer firm, a, a lawyer firm, dude. What is this? So, anyways, nerfing a like nerfing a raid after is great and all, but then the difficulty, the FOMO and gatekeeping and toxicity stays still even after the nerf. So, like launch it, ease. Like they need to make more raids. It's 2024. They need to make raids that are more accessible to more players, not in terms of just eye level, but as well as difficulty. Like they just experimented with Behemoth, right? They were talking about how hell mode and trial modes weren't getting a lot of participation. But Behemoth got the most participation, even though the eye level is pretty high. And, you know, he, he's kind of thinking about that. You know, maybe they should have made it a little bit lower. He didn't mention that, you know, and if he was thinking that, why didn't they just do it? But anyways, um, yeah, going a little bit sidetrack, guys, I think uh, making more accessible raids is a good thing to do. More accessible, not just raid, but content, whether it's horizontal or anything. But more to marry, more to marry, more to marry. Okay, so for now, he feels more rating coming with more vertical systems is too much time, too much money or gold, um, too much stress. So no more endgame content until summer. Okay, uh, this is exactly what I was thinking, exactly what the players were thinking in Korea, as well as, of course, in the West, right? Oh, gee, new raid. New raid means, oh, I got a home. I got to do elixirs. Now I got to do transcendence. Now I got to do economic homes. I got to do weapon transcendence, you know? I'm already working on cars. I'm already working on gems, but then I want to finish my level 10 gems. But then there's, oh, I got to do elixirs all of a sudden because it's more um, gold efficient. Oh, okay. Now I can go back to working on gems, doing some cubes, doing some cubes. Oh, oh Daymine's here. Transcendence. Oh, dude. Like, you know, you keep getting sidetracked by all these rays and uh, vertical systems. So he's saying until summer, nothing's coming. Okay. Uh, he said earlier, too much time needs to be spent on weeklies and too many raids equals too many new systems uh, vertically. And this loop is not healthy, especially, he said, for the new players as well. Um, so YouTube chatters are like, oh, no, new raids. I mean, it's just one guy, right? It's just one guy. And he got one guide. And so he asked, oh, what about extreme mode? You know, and he says, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Strike raid is still going. Uh, it's not scrapped. It's still uh, coming. As planned, if raids are scaling in difficulty based off Thaemon, he mentions like Thaemon is like the road. It's like the the bump in the road, guys. It's a bump in the road. It is the high, the the most difficult Legion raid, and it is a raid that Gold River wanted to make um hard as possible. And he said, with his words, live during Law on, that he doesn't care how much people bitch or complain. He want to make it hard. He want to uh, show. Um, the developer's capability of making a hard raid. So Thaemon is going to be very hard. And it still is hard. And the director, even the new director now, he's saying, he's he's think, he's think he's not thinking about nerfing Thaemon in the immediate future. Still, right? They still want to keep him as 
the trolls the trophy of the hard raid right but he also says that making subsequent raids harder than Thaimine is not ideal obviously it's not good for the health of the game he says right if Thaimine is here and then the next raid Ekana is here and then Behemoth is here right and then Kazaros is like triple that right that's like saying go play we got to be challenges in League of Legends or something to attempt Kazaros right so right now Ekana is like way down here and the Behemoth is way down here so he's talking about that and um Speaking of weeklies and, you know, dailies, right? The time consumed during raids. He's, think, he's thinking about also removing some gates. Like Ivory Tower might delete a gate, right? He said maybe Firehorn. I'm saying no, please don't. Maybe Gate 1. He was just feeling out the chat, all right? He's thinking about what gates. And also, surprisingly, very surprising, he's saying that maybe Rework uh, Elixir and Transcendence need a little bit of rework. This is really cool. Is it the word humble? Is he humbled or something? I don't know what the word is, but I can't believe he said that. Because we thought they, they were really adamant, adamant about not reworking Elixirs. Uh, I'm, as you know, I'm not, a biggest, I'm not the biggest fan of Elixirs. It is the cheapest power gain for your gold spent, but still, I hate this system. I, there's so many things, but... This gives me a little bit of hope. I might hold on to elixirs in my storage until the rework. Um, maybe it's if, like the old elixirs will not get reworked. I don't know what they could do. That's kind of scummy. It's like from this day forward, every elixir you get from a drop now is reworked. I, I don't know what he's going to do. But anyways, guys, I hate cutting elixirs, dude. I hate it. But he's thinking about it. We don't know any dates. Oh, bro, please, please rework Elixir, man, please. All right, the rework is warranted. I'm thinking he's saying this not because of the, for the, oh, for the veterans. No, I think he's saying this because of new players. Because of new players, right? And then, speaking of which, speaking of which, we transition into how he feels, as well as the developers, as well as the company feeling uh feelings toward new players that soloing and content that's what he said word for word not solo content soloing and content is very important since so um oh i mean he's got this he's got to talk about why right like new players he knows that the vertical systems for new players is too much as well as you know just uh, he'll talk about it right we'll talk about it like so coming in summer the only thing that uh, we got a certain kind of time frame is the solo content, okay? Soloing and content, okay? Developers think it's big, and they're like, as they're developing it, they're like, hmm, I wonder what the players think. But the players think that it's, gonna, eh, it's just going to be a little baby stuff, right? But the developers are saying, no, 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 it's got to be big. It's way bigger than what you think, bro. I personally thought he scrapped it because there were no mentions, right? I was very upset because... I think this is very important. New player experience is hugely important, in my opinion, as a Lost Ark player myself. It is one of the most important things in the game for me. And the fact that he addressed it, I got goosebumps. Like, I don't really get, like, I I never really praise these live streams. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Lost Ark save. I don't really do that. But this got me thinking in a very positive way. We'll have to see the results, but the direction is way better than I thought. And his thought process is, once again, in line with me here. So he's saying that it's going to be from Volton to Voldis uh, will be released. And obviously, I think what they're going to do is that they have to attach later. Like, they're going to attach Thaimine, Echina. Because their mission statement for Lost Ark is that it is still a multiplayer game for the uh, three most endgame content. All right. So he's saying that the rewards are not going to be like, you know, silver coin, right? It's not going to be like, oh, you get a condom, go spend it at a vendor. No, 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 no. Oh, maybe they do that. But the thing is, he's saying that it's going to be pretty good rewards, right? There's going to be honing mats, you know, something like elixirs will be given in solo content. So they're saying that it's going to be so the, con I mean, the rewards will be good that you don't even have to do party play. You could just go vertically, I guess, past Voldis right without needing to party play this is what he said for word for word but he didn't say up to what point so i'm gonna assume that you could go past voldis with the match you get from soloing end game content all right 
So this is like, let me put it into perspective. Like, you know how we're saying right now, perfect time to return because of the Super Mokoko event, right? And the Horizon Express. What if in summer, they, this comes out, right? Ooh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. What about this? Plus like Horizontal Express revamp edition. Whoa, almost spilled my coffee. And new class and new, new Super Mokoko event. I don't know. They didn't announce anything like that. The only thing they announced was this, right? But what if there is a new class? What if there is another Super Mokoko? What if there is additional extreme or whatever, the, the Horizontal Express part two? I don't know, but they could cook up a perfect storm. They could, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is that this is like Super Mokoko that we have right now. But what's the problem with Super Mokoko for those that are returning right now? They get to like 1540, but they need gold. But to get gold, they got to do Brel. They got to do Kangle. They got to do uh, uh, later uh, Akan. And they're like, oh, nobody accepts me. True, right? Because they don't have cars, roster, whatever it is that the party finder, party raid leader is gatekeeping them for. Now they could be like, you know what? I'm getting gatekept. Screw you, right? I'm gonna just hang out on Twitch and I'm just gonna solo play and then ask this bozo some questions if I get stuck. There it is. They could just go solo mode, all right? So the, the developers are thinking about this way bigger than y'all, right? I, I thought they gave up on this. I thought the new director was like, yo, screw that. We just making raids here, right? But I'm so glad this made me have goosebumps. Like it's like the first time in two years I heard a news that made me actually happy. So vertical match from solo content in the past. In the he, he this is what he said, right? In the past, in the golden era of MMOs, playing with others gave just being with others. He said gave joy. But now, while we still have fun with others, the stress that comes from party play has also increased. Times changed. True. So if you are party playing and you get stressed, go to soloing and get in content and switch back and forth is what he said, right? Sometimes we want to play alone or with others, he says. Solo ain't, but he also reminds us, reminds us that soloing ain't going to be just like walking the park, right? You will need to study the patterns and gimmicks that you still need to do executing the party play. But obviously, I know someone's going to leave a YouTube comment saying, but how are we going to do solos? Like, if we do a con and you have to intercept four laser beams to stagger the boss, how are we going to solo that? They're going to change it so that you still practice that mechanic, but in a solo, as a solo, whether they put NPCs to block it or they just have one laser line and you block that, they'll, they'll think of something, right? They'll think of something. Don't worry. What about support? They're, they They got you. They already mentioned that support. There's going to be a way for you all to do it, all right? So don't worry, okay? So you can smoothly transition to multiplayer when you're ready after you learn the fights, the gimmicks, in the solo content. This is huge. This is huge. Oh. I can finally recommend the game to some people now. <laughs> oh, dude. This is so good, chat. What do you guys think, man? This is huge, man. Cause like, I know, man. When I like, yo, Zio, should I return to Lost Star? I mean, like, damn, dude. I mean, the event is juicy. You get mats, but you do have to dip your toe in the raid to get some gold, right? And when you do dip your toe in the raid, there is people there, and people are. They could be kind, but people could be just as not kind. As there are kind people, there are unkind people. So now we could just be like, bruh, it's up to you. Just up to you. Yeah, man. And then he, before he went live, he expected the talk of the balance patch. All right. The, the balance is a huge issue again. Okay. All right. Thanks to the meters from the West also being weaponized by Korean players. They're weaponizing it. Okay. Whoever uploaded this, Kek W, bro. All right. Yo, yo, not those legs. Someone, yo, caught, dude. Caught in chat, boys. Caught. Caught, boys. Sura Breaker caught. Where is it? Where's that Sura Breaker? There's that one guy. That one Porsche that got the community mad yesterday. I mean, there's always things going on right now that's making people mad. Um, 
But there's a Sura parse now. Right? There's a Sura parse that are making people really mad. They're like, please nerf this class to the ground, dude. So, ah, oh, where's that post, man? I just had it open, man. I can't find it right now. I don't want to waste the time. Anyways, but yeah, there's a Sura Breaker from the West. There's a parse, an individual parse. And uh, it did like 70 million DPS. And then people are like, the frick, dude, right? So people are u weaponizing that. I mean, everyone in Korea knew that Sura was broken, right? There's a saying right now, Bu, Bu, So. Bu is breaker, Bu, blade, So, sorceress. The triple, the triple, uh, the three kings, the three kings. So everyone's like saying those guys need to get nerfed, right? But breaker now, yesterday just peaked thanks to the meters. All right, so Blade Committee, we're we're a little bit like chilling right now because all the all the tensions on Breaker. <laughs> all right, so he says he's scared about talking about balance. Everyone has different expectations. Balance is hard. Blah blah blah. Excuses. So let's talk. He's talking about the two latest balance patches, January thirty first. Korea got the balance patch for Breaker and Blade nerf. You guys got that recently? You're like, oh my god, Breaker nerf, bro. It's old news, okay? And um, the focus group, the Mage patch. You know, they didn't have a lot of plus or minuses here. Blah, blah, blah. He feels that doing plus or minus, like plus 3%, minus 2%, too frequently is not good because he says that it will frighten players from um, playing a certain class if he did that every like couple weeks. Uh, but we see some classes overperforming, currently peaking, over exceeding. KW, we will be continuously watching these uh, underperformers and overperformers, okay? Um. <laughs> We know who the overperformers are. It's, it's not a secret. Everyone knows. Okay. There's nobody even pretending to hide it these days. Okay. All right. He says, please don't talk about DPS meters from the West. Um, his stance on DPS meters is the same. He saw the NA DPS logs. They're very different from internal data that they have, but there are some similarities. Lots of gap between raids and gates. I don't really buy that. I don't really buy that. Cause I have my, I've seen the data from y'all, and I see my own data, right? I see who MVPs and who don't, right? Whatever, right? Just let it slide. All right. So basically, he's not gonna do anything about DPS meters. That's, I think, the best thing to do. I, I don't think he should be like, oh, he picks up his red phone, calls Aegis. All right, guys, we're going to have a joint forces. We're going to ban all these guys using meters. We're going to combine our dicks. We're going to hunt them all down. I, I think that is the worst approach. That shows incompetence. I think the best approach is let them use meters in the West. In Korea, don't. But in the West, let them use it. And then balance the game better. I think is a better developer than being like, shut them down, shut them down. Hide all the data. No, 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 no. So I'm glad that um, he just brushed it aside very professional anyways uh some of the ex excuses he gives is like you know he's saying that oh the dps ver uh the variation is because of the raids the setting the gates the composition and also he's saying that there's a spike of better players better veterans that are better geared which is very true um this is undeniable facts because famine made if if you survive famine you will become a better player if you survive the mine in the West, you will come out as a better player, right? Challenge makes you stronger, right? The mine will make you better at using your space bar. Um, you cannot use your space bar willy nilly in the mine. You will be punished, okay? You cannot use your super armor skills willy nilly or um, what's the other word? Super armor and tenacity, right? You need to know your tripods. You can't be like, what is tenacity? What does that do? No, 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 no. So you gotta like, you, you, you'll, you'll come out of it. If you survive, you will come out of it as a better player as it did in Korea. So he's like saying that there's better players now with better gear. Um, That's why the data is so skewed or different than NA, blah, 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 right? Just listen to it with one ear, come out the other, right? And then like the Lost Art community in Korea, they're saying that like some communities are more geared than others. Which I do kind of have to agree. Like, for example, let's take a look at Reapers. Reapers, if we look at them under a magnifying glass, most Reapers that didn't quit playing Reapers because of bad image in the past, they're usually freaking good at Reaper and geared. 
which is kind of true. On average, compared to the Blade community in Korea, I you could you could you could conclude that Reaper players are better geared and better conditioned. Cause, you know, it's like a cockroach. You get a cockroach and you spray the bug spray, it keeps it keeps like some will die, but some will evolve to be immune. Which is what happened to Reaper community, right? Now they're in a good position. Now they're popping off. They're more geared. They have better bracelets. They have more 97s, right? Um, compared to the Blade community, which has been pretty much fattened up. There's a lot of fattened up. It's like a steroided chicken, right? There's a lot of uh, new Blade players in Korea because OP, right? They heard it's OP. So there's an influx of new Blades that are not as geared, right? Not as knowledgeable or ex, uh, ex, they're not experts in their craft, right? So anyways, that's what he's saying. So while balance is important, they will work hard on this. Fundamental problems need addressing too. What are the fundamental problems? So he's saying that balance patch is not always enjoyable for everybody, even for maybe for whales, they're immune to it, but he, he I'm glad he addressed it. For regular players, balance patches are a joy, but also a curse. Because if you look at the class forums, for example, let's say the Ward Answer rework. When First Intent lost the entropy usage, what did people do? They're like, oh no, I gotta come home. I gotta swipe or I gotta I gotta use my gold re-gear. Oh no, I had ambush master. I have to drop it. For new for new players or like casual players, that is added stress, right? Because they have to redo their accessories, right? I'm glad he addressed this because or not address that he mentioned this because for balance patch for like I, I would say like 70 to 80 percent of players if they have to redo their gear it, it is stressful it is stressful like where's that gold gonna come out from like they they already have to do elixirs they already have to start doing transcendence they still have to hone but then now balance patch while they did get reworked and they got buffed they gotta like you know go fish the auction house for mass and shit I mean for accessories so he he fine he did acknowledge that that part of the balance patch is not fun where balance patch should be more fun than not fun right so that's what he's saying so now that, that he mentioned that he's thinking about what about so the fundamentals need to be reworked what about so what are, one of those fundamentals is like engravings people start with rocks they have to buy legendary engravings and then because accessories are you know we got to go people 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 and then make sure that we don't have any negative engravings we use API in Korea, right? So he feels that the rework is in order. All right. I don't know what he's talking about here. Like, there's no like details. Like, that, well, does that mean we don't cut rocks anymore? Does that mean they give us free books? What 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 the fundamental change at man? Does that mean nine seven is I don't. Nah, there's no way he's, he's going to disrespect our 9.7s and 7.7s. Seven but anyways, one of the mentions he mentioned, one of the things he mentioned is that change from either or class engravings, uh, like preset changes, he's saying, right? He wants to make it so that you could just, like he says, for example, in Feymine, you could play Predator or you could play Punisher and Echidna. Easy peasy. That's what he says. So I guess he wants to loosen up the class engravings. So and and then he's saying he wants to do this because it will it will it will open more doors for the developers to balance even more in detail. So if like for example, let's say let's say Surge Blade is strong right now, they want to rework uh, uh, remaining energy to be even better, and then everyone's like, mm, well, I can't really shift because it costs so much pounds and gold. But then if they have this system where it could easily change, then they can make rebust it and everyone could just switch, right? I guess that's what he's kind of talking about. Maybe to a small degree, but I don't know how they're gonna assist this if they didn't even mention gems. For example, I want to play first and ten and SO, and I have both the settings, but I can't change because uh, nine of the different gems are not shared. So, as a matter of fact, my tomorrow's stream content was strip my war dancers gems, right? Spoiler alert! But I don't know how they're gonna do this. Is it is it also talk about gems? I mean, we don't know. But all, all we know is that they're thinking about it. And I'm glad they're thinking about it. Okay, we'll see how they cook this. And then let's say, he says, let's talk about Transcendence. Okay. Transcendence, you guys are getting this in two weeks. So he's saying that the RNG... Um, so basically, he's saying it's it's difficult. It's going to nerf. Okay. It's already a good um, power for gold ratio. 
is worth doing, but the process of doing it, he feels is a little bit too punishing, so it's getting nerfed. It's getting reworked to be better for us, okay? That's good. Um, I wish... Uh, I'll say this later, but I guess I wish normal players would be able to unlock the later stages up to stage five. That'd be nice. I don't know if that's going to come to the West. We'll see in two weeks. But um, this is actually like I was not expecting him to admit this. I was not expecting him to admit this and the elixirs. But the fact that he's thinking about it is pretty crazy, right? I mean, I'll take the pie and I'll eat it, which is a solo content. The solo content is good enough news for me to get me excited for summer. He didn't mention any new class. He didn't mention any new rates. That's fine. The solo content was good enough for me to be like revitalized. But then he also mentioned that this stuff, as well as this stuff, uh, that makes me really happy. And this doesn't apply to the West. Extending the first mode for Thaymine. He says no. Um, how many people? How many players got the Eclipse title? Thirty-eight point six percent of the people that are above sixteen thirty have the Eclipse title. So I hope this guy. This gives you the. Oh, sorry. I hope this this gives you the motivation, chat. I hope you, this gives you the motivation. I hope this gives you the motivation to, for you to try, okay? And then he's doing the first MVP rework. Uh, MVP rework is kind of weak, bruh. Um, he just gives a bunch of excuses why the supports are MVPing, blah, 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 blah. And then he reads chat. He's reading chat. He's saying that um, they are developing, preparing for a server transfer, not to all servers, but to some servers that are open. You can you can transfer there. That'll be coming in the future. Wait for that. Is it going to cost money? Probably. Is it going to be good? We don't know. Did they say they're preparing for this long time ago, too? I heard I think I heard it before. I don't know. I think. Right. I think it's not a fact. Uh, they're not going to sell class change tickets, obviously. YouTube chatter asks about piloting. The director will keep a closer eye on the piloters. And if you report, mass report, they'll look into it. Blah, 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 blah. He plans on enforcing rules better. I don't know. Doesn't apply to the West, I guess. I don't want to really touch Daymine. So he doesn't have any plans to... Because people are like, can you nerf the Daymine Clash? Which would be actually a good nerf for the West. But he's saying there's no... He's not even thinking about nerfing Daymine. He wants to keep it the way it is for now. But in the future, I guess it'll be nerfed. <sighs> I don't necessarily agree about that, but I could let that slide. And then someone in chat mentioned the giraffe. <sighs> the giraffe, dude. Someone mentioned the giraffe. For those that are, you know, living on their YouTube and don't know what the giraffe is. Basically, Cillin's mages are getting bullied as in like so many threads that they're giraffes they're getting tired of it they're downvoting it now because there's a lot of you know people that play mages but too bad too freaking bad because even the director when he read the youtube chatter saying can you rework the giraffe he freaking broke character he broke character bro all right it's like dr disrespect breaking character bro it's rare he freaking laughed so loud dude dude this this picture gonna be all over invent now man all right he freaking laughed dude he lost it he's and he gives like a bunch of excuse male shoe shirt ba they're thick boys but like all the female characters in lost Ark, especially like the way koreans customize it make the small face and then the neck gets longer and they're because they're skinny and they wear like skinny skins you know he's going into detail about why the Sillins have a long fucking neck okay no they're not getting reworked dude they're not. She's not getting a model update, guys. Just play the new classes. Hopefully, a new girl class comes out with like Ekina model, man. Ekina's ripped. You see, you see her delts, her shoulders, man. Holy. Anyways, guys, that is gonna wrap it up. What did you guys think? Let me know down below.